Hello Vinyl Community, it's the 13th of March, you join me here uh, at home and I've got a few acquisitions to show you. Um, quite recently I was just bemoaning to somebody that I know, a guy who runs a, a, a record stand actually in my hometown, that it's very difficult to find good um, records anymore in charity shops. Uh, you just mainly find stuff like, you know, Jim Reeves and, you know, whoever else. Most of the good stuff always seems to, you know, be snapped up. And then um, a couple of days later, I went into Oxfam, and lo and behold, I managed to find an original Factory Records edition of this. Happy Mondays, Pills, Thrills and Belly Aches. Great album, really, really takes me back to my misspent youth. So it's an original Factory Records edition, pressing. There is a repress available at the moment, which I, I was actually going to buy, but I probably won't bother now I've got this. I played it. Sounds absolutely great. <clears throat> and then um, the other day I was walking through town, looked in a charity shop window, and saw this. Um, Elton John, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, an album which I've nearly bought uh, on several occasions and I've always kind of you know said to myself oh, I'll, I'll go back and get it tomorrow or next week or something and then you go back and it's gone so finally I thought right go in there let's grab it um, you know great album very much of its era I'm not going to get them out um, just an album to lose yourself in really <clears throat> a few other purchases uh, I've got a couple of grails to show you I bought this recently Sid Barrett, The Madcap Laughs, his first solo album produced by David Gilmore and Roger Waters and also uh, Malcolm Jones. It's on the, uh, it's on the Harvest label. I will be doing some reviews of these records at some point but today it's just a case of showing you what I've been buying um, elsewhere on the site you'll see I've done a review of this this is the uh, the half speed re uh, remaster of Queen's News of the World an album I've, ha I've had in my collection in one form or another for many years I thought I'd finally get that again elsewhere on the site uh, on the YouTube channel you'll find my review of this or you'll see me unboxing it anyway I've not actually done a review of it yet this is the the white vinyl um, love album which has just been reissued by Rhino Oops. sounds really nice great album awesome I think is the word it's often used in the vinyl community. Um, this has been uh, released as part of an ongoing uh, series, there's a sort of magazine that's been given away, well not giving away, I mean you buy the magazine and the magazine costs about £10 and you you get a free record each time. So uh, I couldn't pass this up really, kind of blue. Very nicely packaged, smooth and shiny. We like our records smooth and shiny. So that's Miles Davis, kind of blue, milestone album, full of great performances. <clears throat> um, an artist who I really, really, really admire, and uh, I'm going to be doing a feature on him at a later date, John Cale, from the Velvet Underground, the Helen of Troy album, from the 1970s. And I do have another one to show you here somewhere. We'll get to it in due course. <clears throat> I'm not being terribly organised. So that's most of the kind of new shiny stuff. Uh, and now I've just been buying things on eBay and also I've been looking in charity shops. Finally got a copy of Jackson Brown, Late for the Sky. One of my favourite albums. You know, very chilled out, very mellow. Um... You know, really interesting lyrics, interesting songwriter. Um, this album is just one of the all-time great kind of rock live albums. 
it has a wonderful cover. This is Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, um, on your feet and on your knees. double album. I played the first record of this last night and it absolutely blew the ceiling off the living room. You know, really, really good sound, very kind of vibey. Just a great live album. Blood, Sweat and Tears 3, which uh, I bought actually because I wanted to get, I wanted to get their song, um, Lucretia McEvil on vinyl. But this album is an absolutely brilliant version of James Taylor's Fire and Rain, which just makes your heart stop, you know, incredibly well arranged, absolutely amazing, love Blood, Sweat and Tears. Oh, here's the other John Cale album. This was just a market stall purchase, so not as nice as the Helen of Troy one. Good album, this. It contains some very scary songs. His version of Heartbreak Hotel, which is like a kind of primal scream almost, you know. Brilliant artist, John Cale. Another town market purchase, Paul Simon, Negotiations and Love Songs, 1971 to 1986. Obviously Paul Simon needs no introduction, one of the great songwriters of all time. Um, a charity shop purchase, <laughs> you can't beat a bit of Jimmy Rogers. Bob Dylan was a huge fan of his, you know, old uh, country guy, uh, you know, sang a lot of great songs, a real pioneer in the field of country. Uh, I repurchased this. People who've been to my channel before will know that I was a big fan of the motors. Still am, really, to be honest. This is a nice, shiny new copy of an album which I have had in my collection since 1978. and uh, But my copy was falling apart. So I have a nice new one now. Uh, I picked this up from a kind of £1 bin. This was a TV series uh, in the UK called The Paradise Club featuring Leslie Grantham and uh, Don Henderson. And I was just drawn to the a couple of names on the track list. There's a track by the Stan Tracy big band. I mean, Stan Tracy is like a really brilliant British uh, jazz pianist. Was, I should say. I think he died quite recently. Um, so the fact that he's on there made me think that that could be quite an interesting record. Um, I never actually saw the series, but it was a kind of hard-hitting kind of thing, you know. So I'm, I'm sort of hoping to find a lot of quite hard-driving kind of jazz stuff on there. Jazz and R&B. Uh, and then finally, just a, just a few daft ones, really. Hello, daft. Barry White, is he daft? I don't know. Barry White, had this on CD, thought I'd get a vinyl copy of it. You know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Barry White stuff is, you know, it's, it has that kind of warm uh, 70s production. He always used great musicians. Or, you know, it's always worthwhile listening to the arrangements on a Barry White track. You know, it's like all, all the old um, Philly soul stuff. <clears throat> Just really well done. And then finally, these these are the kind of albums I can never resist when I see them in charity shop bins. Uh, this is the Contiki's. They were a kind of a 60s band playing uh, Hawaiian music. Just a great cover, really. And not content with buying one, I bought another. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I thought I'd nearly finished, and instead... I, there was a really good stall in my hometown yesterday. Um... They're called uh, Heightside. Heightside Records, and they had some really, really good stock. The following records, I bought the whole lot as a job lot for £20, so I was really, really chuffed. ACDC, Power Age, already have this. One of my favourite hard rock albums of all time. Suzanne Vega, an album that I've been meaning to pick up for a long time, and watching uh, Dean Everett's channel, he's a big fan of uh, Suzanne Vega's, and he was raving about her. Hi, Dean. So I thought, right, time to pick it up finally, time to get to know it. Haven't listened to it yet. Little Feet, an album, a, a, a band I've been meaning to check out properly for a long time. I've listened to their stuff on YouTube, and I've always really liked it. I'm particularly drawn towards them because of their drummer, Richard Haywood, who was kind of known as being one of the all-time great kind of jazz rock drummers. You know, very, very sophisticated player. I picked up this album, World Party. This is their first album, Private Revolution. I was really into World Party in the 1990s. I always thought they were a really excellent band. 
Carl Wallinger uh, is the band really. You know, he's a kind of really, really interesting songwriter. Quite retro. He's kind of you know Bob Dylan and the Beatles. He kind of rolls it all together and Prince too. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing this because uh, I've heard I've got a bang and I've got um, I've I've got a couple of uh, World Party albums, but I'd never actually got the first album or listened to it. So I'm looking forward to that. So I will report back. And the final two, a bit like the Elton John uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. These are albums, this is Al Stewart, Year of the Cat. Albums I've been meaning to buy for years and years and years and I've just never got round to. So I saw them at Heightside and I just thought, right, time to get them. Actually, I did used to have this. Breakfast in America by Supertramp, one of the great comfort blanket albums, I always think. So that last set of records I bought for £20 and they're all in nice condition. So there is a plug for Heightside Records. They do they do a stall in Lancaster and they also do one in Todmorden in Yorkshire as well. So thanks guys. Um, and that's it for today. So thank you to the people who've already subscribed and um, hi. And if you like this video, please give us a like, give us a sub. There's going to be plenty more records to show you over the coming weeks and lots more features and discussions, hopefully, of some great music. And uh, I'll be showing you some more of my collection in due course. So take care, Vinyl Community. Have a great day. What's left of it. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you soon. Okay. Take care. Bye.